Right, I've made a new tool for the Chinese mini lathe. Um, it's a tool um, that I have on my MyFerd, or I have one to use on my MyFerd. Um, it's a handle like this, which fits into the back of the um, spindle, so that you can do hand tapping or spring winding or jobs like that. Um, they're very easy to make and um, it's a nice project and I've made this one um, completely on the lathe, the Chinese mini lathe and my um, uh, bent drill and um, I'd like to show you how I've made it and how it is used. Now there's two types of handle you can make for the lathe. Um, one is um, like I've just shown you this one here which I call a fixed handle and that's where the handle is fixed to the uh, mandrel part and that's inserted into the lathe when you do a job and then you have to take the whole handle out when you've finished um, with the mandrel and then there's the um, uh, what I call the quick release handle type um, you may have seen my um, cycle crank handle that I made for the MyFerd. Um, I've made this one um, for the Chinese mini lathe, the quick release type. I like them much better because they're obviously quick to use. Um, there's less likelihood of leaving the handle um, on the um, lathe after you've used it. And um, it... Um, blocks the spindle bore so that the swarf um, doesn't fall down onto the um, screw cut gears at the back and obviously when you're using long bar or you want to clean the spindle out or whatever you can just slacken off the nut and pull the whole mandrel out. Um, now this one hasn't been quite completed yet because I've got to um, blacken up the metal with um, heat and oil um, to give it a rust protective finish and um, when it's finally assembled it goes together um, on this spindle here with um, some Loctite 638 so I'll show you now how I assemble it and what it looks like when it's together and then I will show you how I machined the mandrel on the lathe and um, the basic um, machining operations and I will describe how I made the other parts um, to fit perfectly um, and how I drilled them on the bench drill. I'll give the um, dimensions of the materials uh, what I used later. Um, firstly this steel pin fits into that hole there, it's a nice um, tight interference fit and that taps home then you get this 6mm threaded studding which has a nylon stainless steel locking nut on the end and that goes through the handle and screws into the other side of the aluminium and you use this um, to adjust the end float so that the handle spins nicely when you've got that right you put a nut on the other side and tighten that up with a 10mm spanner so that's the handle part with the brass handle spinning nice and freely. Next you get the um, mandrel. It's got a drilled indent in there. Um, this will be loctited obviously when it's finally assembled. Um, so that one pushes down over there like that. A pin drops down into the indent and then a six millimeter grub screw screws down onto the pin pushing it into the indent and remember it will be with Loctite when it's um, finally assembled. 
Next, you get the other six millimeter studding and screw the brass cone on the end. Like I say, when this one's um, assembled as well at the end, it will be loctited onto the um, threading. That one goes into the mandrel. A small brass washer goes on the back, which is a bit um, smaller in diameter than that diameter there. And the nut screws on the back like that. And obviously that is pushed into the bore of the lathe, of the spindle. And then you just tighten that one with a 10mm spanner, nip it up. That draws the brass into the mandrel and expands and locks the assembly into the spindle bore. Then you can put the handle on the back like that um, for doing whatever job you're doing whether it's spring winding or tapping or whatever. When you finish the job, you can just pull the handle off and leave the mandrel assembly in the lathe. Um, if you ever need to take it out um, when you're using long bar or when you want to clean the bore of the spindle or whatever, you just slacken off the nut at the back, give it a little push like that and pull the assembly out from the lathe. So that's um, basically the assembly. It's a nice, easy tool, simple, very effective and well built. Well, this piece of bar here, this aluminium bar is um, one inch wide and half an inch thick. And it's about one, four, five millimeters long. Um, the centre of that hole is about 25 millimetre in from the end. Um, I um, did a pilot drill through there first on the bench drill and then a half inch drill through. And um, then I used the same pilot drill and half inch drill um, to drill this one through on the lathe. Um, incidentally, this is a two 0.5 inch diameter um, piece of steel and it's about three quarters thick um, I got it out of my spare component box um, so you don't need that shoulder on there if you're making it you can just have it that thick um, and um, like I said I did the uh, uh, pilot drill and the same half inch drill on this one and then to get this hole the same on both this component and the handle I got a pin and machined that up so that it would go through the handle and through the steel part and then you can do a pilot drill and drill through there holding those both together so you know that the pin hole is in exactly the same position both on the aluminium and the steel part so that's one method of doing that the steel pin that goes into the aluminium handle is some um, 5 sixteenths um, diameter and I drilled that so it would be a nice um, interference fit but you can obviously use a bit of Loctite when you um, do final assembly I turned a few thou or a couple of thou off the end so that that slides into that bore on the steel part nice and easily and um, you don't want that sticking when you're putting it together On this part I drilled and tapped for um, six millimetre threading in there obviously um, and I went down as far as I could with the tap obviously not long enough to break through so that's why I used a steel pin which is the same size diameter as the core drill um, and pointed at the end um, to drop down in there 
and um, the grub screw obviously screws down onto the back of that and pushes it into the spindle on the mandrel. The um, mandrel sizes I will show you um, in the video in a minute. Um, First, before I started the mandrel, I t turned up a scrap piece of mild steel and checked it would be a nice fit into the spindle of the um, lathe. And mine works out at about, um, I think it's seven, nine, eight. So it's just under 800, point eight hundred thou. Um, but that's one thing you'll have to check with your lathe because I don't know whether they vary in size a bit. You just want it a nice push fit but so that it doesn't stick at all. The mandrel is made out of a piece of mild steel which was 120 millimeters long. Um, obviously turned down to the diameter of the um, a test piece and turned on that end obviously to fit nicely through the handle and through the steel um, part um, and I will show you that on the lathe in a minute um, the handle I didn't make it was um, a brass handle off of a fireside poker and um, you can find these, I find stuff like that at um, car boot sales or whatever and just collect them up and you never know um, when they'll be handy for a job um, it's a good piece of brass, nice size and that one's obviously drilled through um, to clear the um, 6mm studding To get the indent in um, the correct position, it's obviously straightforward. You push that component onto the mandrel, hold it all together in a um, vise, bench drill um, vise, and drill down carefully um, so it just goes below the surface of the diameter and doesn't break through. So you can obviously make a handle like this to fit any small lathe. Um, obviously the dimensions of this one's for the Chinese mini lathe. I've made um, the um, mandrel part um, 58 millimeters on there. So it slides into the bore of the spindle by 58 millimeters um, and stops against that shoulder there and that is 24 millimeters thick there um, and that will give you enough room between the screw cutting um, gear cover and the handle so it won't clash with that um, obviously you need to make sure this part's turned um, so that when those two parts are on it's flush with the end face there. You don't want the nut protruding too far um, so you catch your hand on it or whatever. And now I will show you the basic um, methods I used on the mini lathe um, to machine this expanding mandrel part. Right, I've faced off this end and drilled down through with a um, long series drill halfway so that the 6mm studding slides through and now I'm going to do the other end and I'd just like to show you that you can actually face off very long bar in the um, Chinese mini lathe um, it won't go up inside the chuck um, but if you're very careful and you have your tools set right, the correct centre height and everything, you can actually face off very carefully and um, get away with it.
So that bar was rough sawn um, before I started, um, but I put it on a disc sander just to get it as flat as possible. Um, and I would do that if you're doing a long piece like this. And um, finish drill through. So that's one slot done and I've turned it 90 degrees now in the tool holder and I'm going to do the other slot. And I'm going the full depth of the cut that the saw can go. And that's it. And that's the saw cuts done. And that's the um, front diameter done. And just check that it's a nice fit into the bore of the spindle. Like that. Next I'm turning it around and um, I'm going to turn the diameter for the handle um, to fit on, which is half an inch in diameter. And just check the handle assembly fits on like that. And when that's done, just face off the corner or the shoulder. Mm. 
a very slight undercut. And a couple of very shallow grooves for Loctite. Next I've turned the job around again and I'm using a, a 10mm um, drill to drill down just past the or beyond the um, saw cut um, depth and when it goes through it rattles a bit on the um, the saw cuts but don't worry about that. Next I um, set the compound um, slide for about 9 degrees. It doesn't have to be dead accurate. And lock that up. Like that. And then I use a small HSS boring bar that's been ground away to give nice clearance on it. And just take light cuts to do the angle.
you should do this makes a bit of a vibration as it goes over the slots but um, it's a fairly good finish in there you can give the cone a bit of a polish and um, what I used for polishing is a aluminium handle that holds um, a Dremel sanding drum, the miniature drum and um, you can use all the different grades of emery um, drums on there and um, it makes a nice sturdy tool for polishing and keeps your fingers safe and well out of the way like that and then you have a nice cone in the end of the mandrel and lastly just clean up the large diameter Deeper the corner. And deeper this corner. And that's the mandrel finished. Next I've got a piece of brass bar um, that's just a bit bigger than the largest diameter of the cone um, for making the part that fits into it and set the compound angle to suit. Next it's centre drill, core diameter for a 6mm um, tap and then the tapping. So I've finished the screw tapping by hand in the vise and now I can part it off to length. Take the sharp edge on the corner off.
and that's the cone done that will fit into the mandrel. So that's the handle finished and the steel nicely blackened. Um, I forgot to mention earlier that uh, when you're making um, this part here to have the grub screw opposite the pin location hole um, and that way when you've got it in the lathe you know that when the grub screws at the top you can obviously put the handle in just like that without having to look around the end to see where the location hole is. Um, so it goes into the lathe like that and then you just t nip up the nut on the end you don't have to tighten these very much they lock up um, very easily like that and then you can flip your handle on and use it for tapping or spring winding or whatever job you're doing with it um, when you finish you can um, take the handle off and put it to one side and use the lathe leaving the mandrel in the spindle. Um, also when I use a handle like that I always put the lathe into neutral um, so that there's no way you can start it up by mistake with the handle on. And from the front of the lathe you can see that you've just got enough um, clearance between the handle nut and the end of the guard. There's about um, seven or eight millimeter clearance um, with the dimensions I've shown. So I've got the lathe in neutral, the handle on the back, um, a test piece of brass in the chuck that has been drilled um, for the um, core diameter for a quarter UNC um, thread and um, you basically wind the handle the tap feeds into the work like normal but you can obviously reverse it whenever you like and clear the swarf and um, you have a great feel of the work less likelihood of actually breaking small taps um, particularly if you're going into a certain depth um, and you can also use it for die cutting in the same way and you can make up a tool um, for doing spring winding so it's an absolutely brilliant tool to have and um, being quick release it makes it even better and um, that's about it on the Chinese mini lathe um, spindle handle.